Hi guys, and this is a video that I'm just showing you off for YouTube by GRC Pimple Officials. And it's a game called Ice Cold Beer, a mechanical game, 1983. Um, and it's one of the things that I'm going to be recreating, hopefully in um, physical format. So I'm going to actually create my own, uh, my own uh, arcade box. And this is just a diary of how far I've got so far. So I'm in research mode at the moment. And I've got a number of images and some measurements and stuff. But the thing that I've probably been having is actually getting the measurements for the actual weather holes sit themselves. So um, and as you can see, there's quite a few holes there so that I need to drill into the uh, back piece there. So... I've cheated a bit and I've taken a different approach and I'll just show you what I've done. So I've actually created a program called Arcade Ball Game Layer Analyzer, a HTML5 game canvas, just chucked it together. And what I've done is I've used an old technique that I use at my place of work. Um, I'm actually a software engineer working the image image industry and uh, what I've done is actually captured this from the manual so if I show you that in the manual um, there we go so here's the manual here and it shows you all the ball the actual uh, whole layout and what I've done is taken this image and make a, made a black and white version of it which is here and what I do is, if I scroll, bleh, there we go. So I've, I've zoomed in. The reason why I'm going to tell you what the program does. So I load up this image, and I literally read pixel by pixel from from the top left hand, hand corner, working my, my scanning my way across the actual uh, image itself. And I, when I hit a black pixel. So the first one, if I take the first hole, if I can find it, there we go. This hole here, so this is the first hole. Yep. When I hit the black pixel, I stop, and then I work my way down until I hit a white pixel. The first white pixel I, I get, I save away the X and Y corners of that, and then I start working my way down until I hit a black pixel again. And then what I do is I save away the X and Y coordinates of the uh, that previous white pixel, so I've got a Y start and a Y end of where the hole, well, the the height of the hole. What I then do is half that that height, so I'll be here now. So now I've got my midpoint of uh, where this hole should be plot. I then work my way to the left until I've hit a black pixel. And then slowly work my way to the right again pixel by pixel first white pixel I get is my vertical my X position start and then I'll work my way my right my way right until I hit black pixel move back one also got my, my end white pixel there so I've got an X start and an X end and then I divide that by two to get into the middle and then I've got my X and Y plot coordinates for that so that allows me to actually plot these holes um, on a on a image this side this size recreate those holes um, when I when you wrap around again obviously you're going to hit this again but what I do is a, I do a collision detection there I just say right is my point um, in any of the bounds that are saved off so I, ch I check that it, it actually is is con it's not contained within that area that I've uh, previously defined in my array. If it is, I'll just get rid of the value and carry on. So in the end, what I get is an X and Y coordinates of all these holes saves me actually going through and trying to figure out where they are. But that's only related to the width and the height of uh, this image. So what I then do is normalize that width and height. So I divide the y by the height that gives me a normalized value for the y and the x values by 
the width and that gives me a normal wise value for the for the width so then I can use that on whatever size stock I want so I can scale this right up to whatever I want just times those values by the width and the height again and then straight away I've got a, an X and Y coordinate to actually plot the holes and I've got this working I'll show you that now so if I jump back into the actual program itself so loaded this in generate JSON output so it's that quick so this is the output of all the actual coordinates of the holes they're all normalized let's just zoom out a bit so I've got the top left X and Y the bottom right X and Y and then the midpoint X and, X and Y there so that's enough to get me um, the actual coordinates that I need for my build and uh, to prove that this is working I've actually output this in uh, in a virtual format and I'll just show you that now there we go and there it is output to screen with the normalized values so this is from the actual uh, JSON that I produce so as you can see it is a basically the same the same layout it might be a bit off because the uh, actual image was skewed but it gives me a starting point anyway so what I'm going to look at now is actually producing a free CAD uh, macro to actually plot the drilling pattern onto a piece of stock and go from there I've also done, done a bit of uh, research into layouts and everything and I've got some from an arcade uh, zone why is that not opening? Oh, there we go. So I've got some uh, some nice little layout documents here to allow. Ah, oh, this looks interesting. I could use that. I never saw that one. Playfield picked from in internet, but don't fit in this project. Ooh, I have to find see if I can find that. Then that gives me a proper decent layout to use. Can find a bigger version of that. Sorry about that. I'm just uh, this was off a forum. Now where did I get it from? Oh, and this is um, it's quite interesting one. I didn't know the actual holes themselves were different sizes. So the red ones are 20 millimeter, the blue ones are 25, and the 30 millimeter ones are the green. So I could use these to actually get to my X and Y values, um, sorry, my proper width and height because obviously these are going to be a percentage of the actual image itself. Or well, I could even just go over here and find out, oh yeah, here we go. So it's me doing the maths, here we go, I've got the actual width and height here, so that's good, so I've got all those. So that's great, so I've got that. I'll have to get this one though, that's cool. I suppose I could take that original image and no, it's not flat. Right, forget, forget I'm, I'm jabbering now. So, yeah, I got those images from from here. It's a cool little forum called arcadecontrols.com and there's someone actually building one here. So, that's all good. So, I'm going to probably nick some of the plans off of here as well um, let's download that again now that give me a bigger version uh, not really I'm gonna have to read that post rather than just download the image oh there we are uh, what's this gonna download onto my computer Nasties, hello. Wait, uh, why do I have to wait 18 seconds? Am I gonna let that do? I don't want to allow anything. Uh, I just clicked on a link and got a load of nasties on my computer now. So I'm gonna have to just wait for this to actually uh, sort itself out. The file does not exist. Yay! So, close that. Well, that wasn't really worth it, was it? Uh, what's the file called? 
measurements ice cold beer print mm. right okay so we'll leave that one I don't want to click on any more files but yeah so here's some uh, also the artwork I've got to do and uh, I have to do a little bit of illustration with this well a lot of illustration the good thing is is this one this is this is brilliant this is this is from Facebook and someone's actually recreated it so this is cool so like a mini version and I would actually love to do this with all the full artwork on it actually start off at this size and work my way up you can see from here that he's a control right with two small joysticks here and a, that's just the start button and he's used uh, lead screws same that you would use in a CNC machine I use one of these in my CNC machine to actually control each of the axes we will use three of them in there so uh, that's a good little uh, good little um, mechanism to use for this and uh, I've got some old uh, when at work when we was actually getting rid of the printers we got some these huge printers for doing photography and uh, they they had uh, we've decommissioned them because we went to uh, fully digital and basically had a they were Nuritsu printers and we just got rid of them and uh, when we was decommissioned, the guy gave me the some of the uh, stepper motors out of them. So, because he knew I was doing CNC machine work, and he said, "This is just going to be chucked away. They're, they're not going to make any money out of these motors." So uh, I asked for them, and I got them. And so I've got three stepper motors downstairs, and I'm going to think I'm going to repurpose them for for this if I get some, myself some these screws. I do like the top line as well. So this is kind of a something that I'm aiming for but with obviously with the artwork on so uh, yeah so that's the start so that's what I'm aiming to do in the next uh, next few days well if I say few days I've got a lot of work to a lot of other projects to carry on with so I'm uh, going to be picking my way through this um, probably using Arduino as well to actually control it all and yeah, so uh, see you soon. I hope that was an interest, and I'll keep you updated with all these uh, my progress through it through this uh, actual project. I'm really looking forward to it. Cheers for now, guys.